All right, can you guys hear me? Uh, I work at Elastic. I'm the Senior Director of uh, Product Marketing for Observability. So what I'm gonna do today is a little background on more most observability. So some of the depth on some of the search questions, eh, it may not be, we got a couple of people to help out here. <laughs> but um, my goal is to show you some of the capabilities that we have now around a new feature called the AI Assistant, right? <clears throat> Copilot that really kind of changes how you use Elastic, especially in the observability solution and kind of getting answers really fast and getting to root cause analysis or whatever you need to do, even building graphs, right? This thing actually has connection to lens and it'll bring up and do charts and everything else, right? Um, so really helps you um, uh, with your operations. And, and one of the reasons we built this is because we're sort of at a point where a lot of, you know, I think you hear the term SRE, we kind of throw it around a lot, but basically operational people have a significant amount of data that they're constantly ingesting. And it's now it's just, it's gotten to a point where it's not just, you know, logs, metrics, and traces, and there's profiling, and there's, I got to look at everything from <clears throat> Kubernetes to, you know, all my Amazon services to the middleware that's there and then my applications and the languages and the services that are, it's just, it's out of control, right? So you can't just go and say, I'll look at this metrics tool or I'll look at just this logging tool. You have to provide more context and information that can help you get to your analysis. And we're sort of at this inflection point, right? Where AI is really, and it, it has to sort of help solve some of those problems. And so with, with Elastic, we've sort of built a lot of those capabilities into our platform, right? We've been around for years. We've had a machine learning platform, you know, for like the last 10 years. How many of you know about that? Use your hand or use it. I have one. There we go. Got one. <laughs> You're part of Elastic. <laughs> um, and, you know, we have AI ops features, which are using ML. You zero click configuration. They run, they'll do like, <clears throat> latency correlations on your traces or failure correlations. Well, it'll do things like uh, I'll take metrics, logs, and and um, uh, traces, and I can correlate it with Kubernetes data and with the application data, and I can tell you where you have got the worst anomalies and where you might see issues, right? Um, so there's a lot of different sort of capabilities, like even log pattern analysis or spike analysis. So a lot of these are just quickly, you can configure them and go. So we built a lot of capabilities and just continuously improved them. And recently we released something called, as a marketing term, it's called Esray. Awesome, we're there. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so Esray is just a group of capabilities that we have and that we've released. But underneath there is, you know, things like Elser, which is our transformer model for vector search, right? <clears throat> and the ability to do vector search. Um, and then the ability for us to, you know, do rag based, you know, capabilities and also the delivery of like the AI assistant, right? And in observability and in security, we have a copilot that's available. Now, the interesting thing about this copilot is that and if you're, how many of you are familiar with copilots and assistants now, right? Right. So it doesn't just collect, connect to the LLM, right? You can't just go and say, oh, hey, I'm just going to go get a query and I'm going to say, hey, what does this error mean? You know, or what is a 502 or oh, something, something, right? All right, and go to the, the, the LLM and it can go and search that knowledge base and give you an answer, right? That's not really valuable. Why is it? It's kind of like a Google food, right? We're kind of used to that, right? Go to Google, do a search, and we'll find an answer, right? All right, that's just summarizing it. But what we do is, you know, just as you heard in the last, you know, um, presentation is that we can actually add context to that question and query with internal information, right? Your GitHub issues, your run books, customer issues, any of the indices that are in Elastic, right? Any of that data can be utilized to help augment and improve that query so you get more contextual information. And that's what it means with RAG. And I'll kind of walk you through how this sort of works, right? <clears throat> Uh, and today, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you how to set this up inside of Elastic, right? And I'm going to actually connect up to the Open Telemetry demo. How many of you use Open Telemetry? I got one guy. There you go. Um, so you know, it, it's a there's an Open Telemetry demo actually, right? Where you can download. So 
open GitHub repo, you can go and I've actually taken that in, in this, brought it in and added, I'll use a loose term vector and vectorized it, but um, we'll kind of go through what that means. Uh, and also some internal databases. And I'll show you how you can get GitHub issues while you're analyzing, I can get run books pop up, right? Not just the Google Foo kind of LLM information that you have, right? And so that's <clears throat> what has kind of changed over the last six months here, right? And the assistant is actually a pretty interesting set of capabilities. And it's just going to grow, right? We can actually bring up images now in there. So if you have architecture diagrams and you store in the index, it will come up. So it's multimodal. So, okay, what is RAT, right? And you kind of mentioned it. Somebody asked about it. So it basically takes your query to the LLM, right? You're going to ask it some generalized query. In some cases that query will have things like, hey, you know, how many users did I actually have clicking on this capability? Well, the LLM is not going to know what that answer is necessarily, right? <clears throat> you give it a service or something, it may have it. So what we do is we actually go and we look at your internal business data that's there. And I'm just going to kind of go through this to this. And <clears throat> we will take a look at that information. The query itself gets, um, goes through and gets embeddings, right? And then your data that you have, whatever that data could be in those indices, will also go get processed through pre process, right? And, and in the actual indices, we'll have embeddings inside of them. And based on the query, we'll match on those embeddings and find the most relevant set of documents that is pertinent to that query. Bundle that up, goes to the LLM. The LLM uses the query and it looks for its internal knowledge or its knowledge base from the internet, whatever it has, analyze the information, and then sends back a more contextual answer for you, right? So what RAG does is it gives you the ability to augment your query with not just LLM information, but internal knowledge. Um, so most co-pilots today, if you go to, you know, I was, I was giving Sherry an example, you know, I was looking at San Francisco uh, construction codes, right? And there's a site that has this. And if you go in there and it said, oh, we've got a co-pilot and you ask questions and it, it just does search, right? And it's just sending a function over and then LLM comes back and tries to find a search and it doesn't always get the right answer anyway, right? But what this does, it gives you that more, more contextual information. And especially if you're an SRE, or you're trying to troubleshoot your application, you're going to want to find out, hey, how do I fix this error? And you may have a run book that's been defined, right? And it'll bring that up. Or you want to see the architecture or the code that's part of that service. It'll bring that up if it's connected to GitHub. Or you can connect it to you know, uh, your Confluence pages or Jira, et cetera. And I'll show you how to set some of that up. So let me just go through. Um, oh, so. Okay. Um, so let's start with, you know, when you get into Elastic, I'm in observability, and we've added a capability called SLOs, right? We can now define a SLO and, and kind of manage uh, across multiple aspects, actually. You can use a, a KQL, right, based on your logs, actually define based on your logs a, uh, an SLO. You can look at latencies, availability, specialized metrics. Uh, and, a, and a numerous other capabilities of actually defining what an SLO is. In this case, right, we're kind of monitoring a open telemetry demo and specifically one service, the cart service. And it's showing that, okay, we're not meeting the SLO. And what that means is, well, you know, uh, the burn rate's kind of uh, broken down. We've kind of succeeded it, right? We've got an alert um, and we're not at the, uh, <clears throat> the objective that, you know, we wanted to be at 99.9%. So what I could do is I can actually go in I can take a look at service details. This will take me to straight to the APM page, right, where we have it running. And in the APM page, I get a lot of information, right? I can, um, we've got a machine learning job running against this for anomalies. We've got all of our transactions against it. Looks like something's kind of off, let's say, on the empty cart service. But I also see an error. Okay, let's take a look at that error. Now, this is all standard APM capability that we have, right? And take native telemetry. Um, what I can do in here is I get things like, hey, here's the exception message, right? Um, I can go and ask it, hey, what is this error? But I can also, and that, that goes to an LLM, right? <clears throat> or I can just go straight and have a chat if I wanted to. And I could say, um, just ask it that, right? 
and it'll go through and run through that kind of um, scenario, the, the, the process that I told you about in, with RAG, right? And it goes and looks at internal information, talks with uh, the LLM. And in this case, what we've done is we actually have it connected to Azure OpenAI, okay? And you'll see that comes back and says, yeah, hey, there is a known problem, right? Because it found it inside the indice where we kind of where we brought in um, that repo, right? And uh, let's just bring this up. There we go. And so I not only get a summary of that GitHub issue, but I can go to it, okay? And then I can say, okay, is there, here's another one. Because now I want to know how I'm going to work on it, right? As an example, right? And so this will bring up a, you know, kind of run book, you know, calm down, have some coffee and call Luca. Okay, so that's a simple contrived example, right? Um, here's another one. And so, you know, I'm just now I'm just asking her some random question. And this again is not going to um, the LLM necessarily or getting that information, but the LLM is actually working and asking Elastic to help pull some of that. And it pulls a, uh, a known run book that we have inside of our repo. It could have done one of two things. If it didn't find it in there, it would go in and effectively do its own run book based on the knowledge that it has in the LLM. Right? So you can also say, hey, give me a, a run book for 502 hours. How do you generally handle this? And it'll just go get general information from the internet, right? Or whatever knowledge base it has, what it's been trained on. Okay. So this, this gives you a, a kind of an, a, a, a pretty detailed uh, response of this. Now, if we go and take a look at, um, let me see if I can find it, <clears throat> our repository, you'll see that you know, we have that run book listed here. So what's happened is we pull that in, right? We've kind of worked through the, um, the pipeline, <clears throat> created embeddings, and let me show you how you get this to operate, right? Um, so the first thing you're gonna do is, you know, in order to get some of this to work, you gotta know where your data is, right? So we have the concept of adding connectors. And in here, you know, when you go into search, you go look for a connector, and we've got numerous ones. I've used a GitHub connector in this specific instance, but like I said, you can add data from Jira. I mean, whatever's here, right? <clears throat> Azure blobs, uh, Salesforce data, right? If you want service now for customer issues, etc., right? Bring all that in, even Slack and, and Zoom connectors. Um, and what we do is, it, you know, let's just take a look at the open telemetry demo as, as an example, right? Uh, in the open telemetry demo, once you configure this, right, we've configured it to connect up to our GitHub location, give it a token, create an index. And then what we do is we'll go in and, and create a pipeline. And then this pipeline, we use um, <clears throat> our transformer model that comes, you know, I don't know what was released probably about five, six months ago, or no, about a year ago, I think almost, right? So LSER, it's version two now. And we create a pipeline that will effectively run this against any of the data that's coming in as we're ingesting from that repo, right? And <clears throat> this will go in, in this case, I run it against several different um, fields. Right, so you'll see the index mappings on this right in a minute. So if I take a look at the documents, right in there, right, and this is what was ingested. Pick one out of random. Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Let's just pick this for right. Um, if you come down into it, you'll see uh, in here in the in the inference pipeline is added a set of weights and tokens. So this is. You know, for loose terms, you know, it's a set of embeddings called a vector, but not really in this case, right? Because it's a sparse based one. And that is what helps when I do the query, 
that gets converted to its own set of weights and tokens, and then they get matched for the best possible options over here, right? So this is sort of the magic behind the scene of actually helping achieve what we have in this slide, right? <clears throat> in enabling you to get that internal information, the right contextual information, right? To help provide a better sort of answer, right? And give you some of that information. Um, and let me see if I can kind of show you how this will work with uh, open telemetry. And so in here, I've got a set of services that I've brought in from an open telemetry application. And I'll just ask it, you know, uh, And this sort of will kind of work through that same process. And what you can see here is a set of events, right? Um, and this is the effective kind of communication that's going on between um, Elastic, the LLM, and the LLM actually asking Elastic to do a certain set of capabilities, right? So I'll, I'll, I have a couple of slides to show you what happened here, right? And it says, yeah, there are 35 open issues in the open telemetry demo. So if we go to the issues tab here, um, well, I didn't sync this this morning, but as of last night, it was 30, 35. But if you go to the GitHub page, there's 32. So they've closed three in the last whatever, half a day, right? But you can see how important and useful this is, right? But for day-to-day -day sort of operations, help you actually solve problems and issues, right? The ability to have that internal information along with some of that other information is really, really useful. So how does that work? So let's just take a look at what happened there, right? As an example. So we'll use this as a as a uh, quick question. What is the error, right? So generally, you know, you could just send that to LM, but what we do is we go in, we'll take a look at the knowledge base, we'll get some information in more additional context. We actually tell the LM, here's a list of functions. What those functions are are the ability to say, hey, I don't know about this. Can you run Elasticsearch for this, right? And the way the way the LLM actually knows is because we also have an internal knowledge base that you can give the LLM hints. So let's say I ask a question, what's my revenue impact for the last three months? Okay, you can send that, but inside of a knowledge base, we'll pull up that contextual information saying, yes, you got to look at the revenue indice and we'll send it a set of functions like lens functions, Elasticsearch components, you do ESQL, the LM will actually take that information and say, oh, okay, I know from the knowledge base, there's an indice for revenue. Elastic, can you go run this search, right, for that indice and give the user this information? So we're not actually, in most cases, sending any internal information, we're rather sending it hints that it then utilizes to ask Elastic to do um, more capabilities, right? And so in this case, right, you've got, oh, let's go for that prompt again, sorry, right? Like in here, it would take and say, okay, look, I need to, I don't have that information. So I'm going to ask Elastic to go get that by doing a, uh, doing a search function, executes it, and then you get an answer. 42 users, right? Now the LM didn't have that, but it asked Elastic to get it. Um, in my scenario here, you saw what you saw an example here of where it actually did a search, right? Because in the context that we sent over, it knows that there is a there is actually a indice that was already brought in for the open telemetry demo that was running because of some the information in the knowledge base. Okay. Um, so that's a quick run through of how first the AI system works, how RAG works, and how you can actually bring in internal information into Elastic, get a set of embeddings and actually get that, make that useful for your sort of day-to-day -day kind of operations by using the AI Assistant. Hi, it's Carly from Elastic here. Thanks for watching this meetup recording. If you'd like to attend a local meetup and join us, do look and check out the link in the description and we will see you there.